families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Families Divided TV. In this segment, Dr. Colleen Murray will be speaking with three parents who are either alienated or estranged from their adult alienated children. They'll be sharing with you some of the things that they've gone through and some of the ways they deal with coping with being alienated or estranged. We'll be back to share these things with you right after these messages. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. Hello and welcome to this segment of Families Divided. Today we're going to be talking about parental alienation of adult children. The perpetuation of emotional abuse that results in an adult child being alienated can be an extension of alienating behavior they experienced in childhood. But this abuse can also happen to adult children who were never subjected to alienating behaviors as children. And when this happens, it is often the result of abuse from others in the adult child's life that have significant influence over them. And whether it's an extension of childhood alienation or when an adult parent-child relationship seemingly overnight shifts, either way, the parents become completely devastated by the destruction of this relationship. So today, we're gonna to be talking to three panelists, Elaine Simmons, Jeff Morgan, and Philip Hendricks. They're gonna be sharing their experiences to provide insight and tips into this phenomena of adult alienated children. Hello, Elaine, Jeff, and Philip. Welcome to our show today. Hi, Colleen. Thank you Hi. so much for inviting me. Hi, Colleen. Hi. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Philip. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Great. Well, I am so glad that all of you are here today and that you've taken time out to come and talk with us about these things. Um, so let me start with you, Elaine. Um, can you share with our audience how being alienated from an adult child is different from being alienated from one's child due to divorce? Well, um, there is no divorce in my family, so I don't have any firsthand experience with that aspect. I um, do know that my husband and I have been married 50 years. We just celebrated our anniversary a short time ago. And um, this came out of the blue for us. We did not expect it. And we believe that there is some outside influence and third party influence, but um, it, it is pretty much a decision of my adult child and his uh, spouse to proceed with this alienation against us and uh, to alienate our grandchildren from us. Um, but it's very painful. It's traumatic to think that a child that you raised my son was 38 years old when he stopped speaking with us. He's 48 now. And um, it's very painful. We had a good relationship and um, all of a sudden we're bad people in his opinion. And um, it is, it's traumatic. You get kind of a PTSD from it. You, you just, it, 
you're just very confused. You just don't know what happened. So, mm-hmm. you know, to know that your own child has made this decision against you is, is extremely painful. Hmm. And how many years are you and your husband celebrating? Well, we had, we celebrated our 50th in May. Oh, and, uh, that's wonderful. And, and we, had been, uh, we had been together for four years before we were married, four and a half years before we were married. So we've been together a long time. Yeah. Do you have any other children? We do. We have another son and uh, he has remained in contact with us. We have a good relationship with he and his wife and um, his small child. And uh, that is a blessing. Not everyone is that fortunate. There are a lot of people who have lost their only child to alienation or have lost multiple children to alienation um, for for different reasons. Um, Each person has their own story, but all of our stories seem to be very similar. Yeah. And uh, what about you, Jeff? So um, thank you so much, Colleen. Um, Contrary to, um, to Elaine there, most of the alienation I've experienced has been due to divorce. So I can't really speak about the adult um, child being alienated on his or her own because divorce seems to have that big impact a lot of times. And I'll tell you, going back to my own experience as a child, um, when my mother filed for divorce against my father, um, it created a lot of family dynamics that I did not like. And there were issues that took place between my, me and my mother, primarily. Um, you know, when you're a child, it does, does not mean that you accept everything that you feel is wrong. Mm-hmm. You make judgments and you say, this is wrong. And the person who does the, the, the action sometimes does suffer consequences like that. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, the thing is, is that children pick sides a lot of times. And what's happened today, especially because I've told you before, I talk a lot about no fault divorce. We pretend that nobody's at fault. And then what happens is that people get to recreate a story and to put blame on somebody. Very few times is there a no fault divorce in which somebody's not blaming the other person, right? And again, you have children that start to pick sides. Um, I think, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've seen, Colleen, when we deal with, when we talk about the issue of divorce, there's this whole ideology that, you know, children will be happy if their parents are happy, um, children are resilient. And I think that's just a false ideology. I think that divorce oftentimes puts too much of a burden upon little shoulders that they're not, that they are not designed to bear. And even with adult, with adult children of divorce, um, I've talked with adult children that have just been completely devastated. So my experience is a little bit different. Um, And just because you say that, you know, the the issue of divorce, it may not be immediately, it may be a couple of years down the road when somebody's still trying to recreate a narrative, right? Mm. So um, I I empathize with everything that Elaine said. I've met many parents that have gone through that when all of a sudden for no reason, and often because they've chosen a partner who um, does not want to have an in-law around or, or somehow is threatened by a a, a the, the, you know, the husband's mother is maybe being a threat to the wife or something like that. This is crazy, but that something operates behind the scenes. So um, Elaine, I empathize with you a whole lot, but my experience for the most part has been um, that a lot of the alienation is due to divorce. And I don't mm-hmm. completely know how to address that except to address the issue of divorce and quit making everybody accept that, oh, everybody will be happy if you get a good divorce. What is a good divorce? Tell me. So, right. So, um, so um, thank you for sharing that with us. And, and Philip, same question. Um, what is your experience with alienated children, either from divorce or um, being alienated in their adulthood after having a good relationship? Well, my scenario came about as a result of divorce. And I, I, I want to say it even became worse later in life when they became adult. Um, There are some distinct differences. Both are excruciatingly difficult, very painful emotionally, of course. Mm -hmm. And anybody who has has gone through it can attest to that. Um, It's very difficult to be cut off from your children and Mm -hmm. to, to not have those relationships, not be able to spend holiday and other family times or what would be otherwise family time. Um, Yesterday, for example, was Father's Day as we record this. And I know many fathers, including myself, did not hear from my children. 
and that's very painful. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the most painful things uh, I'll say is, is that on special days when you want to speak to your loved ones and they're not there for you, you're not able to speak with them for one reason or another. And sure. so that's, it's very painful. Sure. And uh, so it, uh, it, it's, it sounds like, um, in, in Jeff and Philip's case, it sounds like this idea that is perpetrated throughout the divorce that just let the children do what they need to do right now and they'll grow out of it, which I hear quite often. They'll come around is another phrase I like. Um, that, that simply is not actually true. Would you say all the time or most <laughs> of the time? Philip, what would you say? I, I agree with that uh, totally, Colleen. It's... It, it, it's it's so it's a wonderful gesture, um, and I always encourage people to hold out to hope, because where there's hope, there's the possibility of of that happening. But the statistics are that most children, even as adults, don't come back. You rarely hear, and it takes uh, a, a life moving episode in their own lives generally in order for that to be triggered and for them to reach out or accept communication from us. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, you look like you wanted to add something to that. What uh, we, we got, we got about 30 seconds. What would you like to add to that before I move on to the next question? Yeah, no, it was just that in those situations, you know, you, um, there's, there's so much you could add to that. Um, but the whole thing, um, I went through the same thing yesterday. My son took me out for lunch and breakfast, and that was wonderful. But I have two girls, and they have children. So because of this whole divorce thing and the alienation, I've not seen some of my grandchildren alive ever. And, mm. you, and you know, and I was one of the ones that wanted to just say, I just want to have a nice family, sure. you know, and love my grandchildren. So I'm completely in agreement with Philip. Yeah, so... Um, I guess that's a good segue into our next question, um, Jeff, is uh, what, what do you believe some of the challenges are for parents of adult alienated children? I guess one of those is that if you heard this fallacy during your divorce that the child might change their mind or they'll come around, I guess the big challenge is, is the, the reality that that's probably statistically not going to happen. Um, yeah. There are a lot of people that give advice that is well-intentioned, but just false. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way you can look at it. I mean, you hear people say, well, when they get old, they're going to come around. Are they a prophet? Do they know this? And nevertheless, even, you know, some people go through divorce, their kids are young. So you're telling me that I've got to spend 15 years away from my children. And then they're going to come around magically and all of a sudden embrace me as daddy. I've known of many people that 40 years later, their children have not embraced them as daddy or as mom because of the whole issue of divorce. But I think you talk about it from a personal level. I mean, you're going through this thing when you've had this wonderful relationship with your kids or a good relationship, not always wonderful. I mean, you have a relationship with your children, you're your father yeah. to them, a mother to them. And then all of a sudden now you have become an enemy to them. You become something that... Um, you just never were. Um, so there's the first thing that I think it's the feeling of, of the of failure. Like, what did I do? Did I do something? Because the first thing you do is you want to say, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But, you know, if you look at scripture, there's a lot of times when God talks about alienation. And he says, it's your sins that have alienated you from me. You know, God is the perfect father. And yet he's also an alienated father. And, right. and I don't want to minimize, you know, what, can, what, what, have we, what have we done? But we also have to also realize, too, that sometimes it's the answer is next to nothing. And, um, but the idea about the failure, and especially if you don't even know what you're dealing with, you're like, what has just happened here? I remember mm -hmm. talking with one counselor about this, and he's had 40 years of experience. He said, Jeff, he said, remember this, there is no advocate on the other side for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've tried mm -hmm. to do things right, but you're always on thin ice. And no matter what you do, it's going to be taken uh, in a way that is unintended and you have no advocate. So you have to always be careful with that. Um, 
But you know, Colleen, the other thing, and I'll make this real quickly here, is that mm -hmm. the complete shock sometimes, because you hear things that sometimes you're accused of, and you're like, that never happened. You know, the idea of the re rec recreation of memories of things, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, this never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. And sometimes you hear people saying that, you know, a, a child will accuse a parent of something that there's no possible way they can even know about because they were too yeah. young. And there was one thing that I read, and I'll finish right here. It says, your memories can betray you. Memories are far from being a faithful recreation of reality. And that's something that you have to understand as a parent, that sometimes your children have recreated memories that just are not true. Right. And then they are subsequently reinforced. And Dr. Loftus has done a ton of research yeah. on this. They're, they're then reinforced by maybe an, an unwitting, <laughs> willing uh, participant or unwitting also maybe a uh, therapist that doesn't understand alienation. And so they are, they are inadvertently um, just reinforcing these false memories that the child has about how abusive or whatever, despite the fact that there's no evidence to support any of that, right. neither was it brought up before or after the divorce um, investigations, I see a lot that come back unsubstantiated or, or, you know, impossible, like never happened. Um, and then, then it's just reinforced and reinforced. Um, so Philip, same question. What, what would you say the challenges are adding on so to that? So true. The, the other side of that sword is that whatever good memories, mm -hmm. favorable memories that you might have with that child, are further and further away, both mm -hmm. in our minds and in their minds. So um, it, it really becomes a battle of attrition. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing I always think about is, you know, oh, great, my child is now 18 or 19 or 21 or whatever uh, age of majority. And you think, well, now that they're no longer under the jurisdiction of the court, I can call them. No, right. you can't, because that person, sadly, is, is a virtual stranger. Mm -hmm. They don't know you, and you really don't know them. Right. And to call them up is just like calling up a complete stranger and trying to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. It would prove very difficult and sure. needless to say awkward. Um, some have attempted to do that, I know, and its results have been disastrous because that person then seeks a protective order against you. And now you're legally prohibited from, right. from reaching out. And it just, it's, it's almost a no win situation. Um, my words of encouragement though, is never give up hope. Sure. Never stop trying to reach out to your child or children. Um, someday, one day, something might happen in, in their life that, will provide that opportunity to you. Yeah. So um, when you were saying that, Philip, it reminded me of a video I watched not that long ago um, about a, um, it's not an alienated child, but I think it, I think it falls into the, um, the psychological effects of this. Uh, it was a child who was kidnapped at birth and, um, and 20 years later was reunited with the birth mother um, when it came up that the mother that raised her had kidnapped her and the child is so aligned with the kidnapper and has a bond with them um, that, that, she, that this idea, the, the biological mother had that they would be instantly bonded because she gave birth to her and that's her birth child was completely devastating to the birth mother right. because the child is like you said, a virtual stranger and, Although that's not an alienated child, I think it goes towards the the mental capacity of a child being raised by somebody and just that constant interaction with them. They don't know if it's negative or positive. They just know that they're bonding with them. They don't know under what circumstances this relationship um, has developed or is continuing to be developed. Um, right. They only know what their life is. You know, I, I, I often... I often find it interesting when people think that children can know more than what their life actually is. Um, they can't, they don't have any experience outside of their own life. Right. right? So, Sadly, like, it's, it's, it's what I refer to as, as the flat earth society. That's right? all they know. 
they don't know anything different. Sure, sure. Right, so. good point. So um, Elaine, uh, what are some challenges of parents of adult alienated children when they are alienated um, as adults, when they weren't alienated as children? Well, I, I think um, there's a lot of concern that if you have other children, that they will also follow suit and mm -hmm. you'll end up with uh, all of your children or multiple children alienated from you. And that's, you know, that's devastating. And um, what do you do with your stuff? I mean, when you're gone, you know, who's going to take care of you when you're sick and you're aging and you're needing someone to, you know, to research a place for you to live. Um, you have no one. And what are you going to do with your possessions? Who's going to take care of cleaning out your home and, you know, all these different things that you start thinking about. If I were, you know, if something were to happen to me next week and if, if I were alone, which, you know, fortunately I had my husband, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are single and they, they just don't know who's going to take me to the doctor when I can't see or I can't drive if I live to be 95 years old, what's, you know, what's going to happen to me? That's a big concern. And, um, you know, and if all of your children abandon you, then, I mean, you're alone. And then you've also got the situation where other family members, you start to feel very betrayed when other family members continue these loving, wonderful relationships with your child, when you're excluded from everything and you end up being excluded from other family functions as well, because the alienated child doesn't want to be around you. So other people will comply and not invite you. And you find yourself very isolated and very hurt and very lonely. Um, so I think when you start getting people who are older, you, you have people that are young and in the middle of a career, some of those things don't come to mind. But when you start getting people that are in their 60s and 70s, and you know, all of a sudden, their adult child decides, okay, I don't want to be bothered with you anymore. And they just abandon you. I mean, that's, that's devastating. And you just don't know sure. what to do. Everything you thought was going to be there for you when you got older is gone. And sure. you don't know how to handle it. And so I think that's a, a huge challenge for people who have alienated children. And it's, it's very cruel for a child to do this, especially as a parent gets older and, you know, they kind of, they kind of assume their child would always be there for them. And a lot of the children have said, don't worry, you know, mom, dad, I will always be there for you. Don't worry about it. You're going to have someone to care for you. And then that child says, nope, not so be see, for you now. Yeah, that seems, you know, I can see, um, I can see how uh, devastating that would be too to have the uh, other family members aligning with and actually in just reinforcing the bad behavior mm -hmm. um, and, and inadvertently making it worse um, because now they have created the child, the adult child can actually create a safe space within the family because they know the family is going to go ahead and you know alienate the parent from them further they're going to, they're going to be, they're going to be complying with all these requests, right? So they'll, they'll go ahead and do that. That's, I can see how hurtful that would be. Um, well, we only have about a minute left. So about each get about 20 seconds. So we're going to start with you, Philip. Um, you already did offer one tip, I think, um, with uh, telling parents not to give up, but what are some other tips you could offer parents who are well, alienated? I've got to say, Jimmy Valvano, Coach V, famously said in his fight for cancer, which eventually took his life, never give up. Never, ever give up. Hold out hope. There will be an opportunity sometime for you to reach out to your child or for your child or children to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of whatever opportunities are afforded to you, holidays, birthdays, whatever they may be. Maintain as much contact with them as you can or should, given the circumstances, but never uh, give up hope. I, I love that. Thank you, Philip. Uh, Elaine, 20 seconds, same question. What tips do you have for um, any uh, adult, parents of adult alienated children? 
Well, I think people need to remember that just because the your alienated children have an opinion of you, it may not be accurate. So don't change who you are to try to lure your child to come back to you because it doesn't work. Um, be who you are. You have a right to be your own person. And if you change, try to change who you are to accommodate your alienated child, other people may not like you as much. <laughs> as they liked you the way you were before. So just sure. be yourself, you know, you can't, there's nothing you can do. This is out of your hands. It's out of your control. So, you know, what you're doing, you know, if, if, if you've done things in the past and you think you need to, you know, maybe make some changes and improvements in your own personality, because there could be a, a, you know, tiny bit of truth in what your child says about you, you know, reevaluate mm-hmm. yourself. And if you need to make changes, make those changes, but don't go and, you know, completely change who you are. Be, be yourself. You have a right to be that person. Yeah. Good advice. Jeff, you're wrapping us up. 20 yeah. seconds. What do you got? So two things I would say, first off, um, this is uncharted territory for most people. You won't always get it right. And you have to accept that. Do the best that you can, but you're not always going to get it right. Um, and, I, and at the same time, I would say take advice from others, but also be prepared to be misunderstood. Be prepared to be given very bad advice. And sometimes be prepared to be almost abandoned or betrayed by people who should know better because they will take a side that may not be accurate. Um, it's really something in our culture today where all of a sudden kids always know more than parents. Children are right. Parents are wrong. And this has been an indoctrination. This is something that we need to stand up against. Be truthful, be patient, be honest, be kind, do what you can. Um, but that, that's basically it. Well, uh, great stuff. Thank you so much, all of you, for uh, taking time out of your day today to come and join us here and share with our audience your personal stories and your heartfelt um, experiences and, and advice. Uh, and, and we just want to thank you so much for that. And to our audience, we thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you next time on Families Divided. Next week on Families Divided TV, Dr. Colleen Murray talks with Dr. Jennifer Harmon about her research of a structural intervention of severely alienated children. Thank you.